Hello everyone. As part of today's session, we will talk about loading data from PostgreSQL and replicating it across um, into a target uh, Snowflake um, warehouse. So let's assume that you have a requirement where you have your master data, your transaction data loaded in Postgres and you want to move that across into a centralized database like Snowflake so that you have all data in a centralized location for your reporting requirements. So to achieve this functionality from Data Lakehouse, we would essentially have three major components. Component one, we'd have to create a source connection with Postgres, we've got to create a target connection with Snowflake, and we've got to create a bridge that would load the data from the source into a target using the Data Lakehouse sync bridge. So once you log into app.datalakehouse.io, on the left, you see a connections tab. Once you click on sources, you should see a list of various sources that Data Lakehouse.io can connect with. We can do a quick search on Postgres, and in case if your Postgres is loaded on Ivan, we can use the Ivan Postgres SQL connection, or we can use a non-Ivan Postgres SQL connection. So just for the interest of time, I have preloaded some of the values, and I will use the preloaded values for this demonstration. So as soon as you click on Add New Source, it should take you to a landing page, which looks very similar to this landing page. And after we do, do that, uh, you've got to first, first specify a logical name for your source. You've got to specify a target schema name, which is target schema prefix, is where uh, all the data will be loaded in Snowflake uh, using the name specified. So in this scenario, the data loaded from uh, PostgreSQL will load in Snowflake under the schema Postgres source data. You've got to specify the server and the host name of the Postgres database, the port that you want to connect with, the database um, that you want to replicate from uh, Postgres database, the user that you want to log in with, uh, and the authentication um, uh, username password to connect with your source Postgres, and whether you want to allow uh, non-primary key tables to be replicated across your database. And then uh, you have something called as change data capture that basically uh, is a mechanism to, to, to capture uh, Delta records that have changed and you only want to capture the changed records. So you either have the option to choose X-Men or you can choose logical replication. Uh, and if you would like to have more details around whether you should use X-Men or logical replication, feel free to reach out to us and we would be happy to have a conversation around this. And then after once you've done, you click on save and test. And once we do that, uh, Data Lake House would perform a connection test with Postgres and indicate if, I, if it's successful or it has failed. If everything has gone right, you should see a screen where you can then specify that if you want to choose uh, which tables do you want to replicate. So you can choose, uh, you can choose a schema, you can choose the tables, uh, you can check if the um, underlying tables in Postgres has a primary key or not. And if you also want to replicate um, um, individual tables, you can click the respective buttons to resync at a table level. And you can also control the columns being replicated by choosing specific columns that you choose. Um, once that is done, we, are, we have covered the source part of it. We would next go to targets to set up our Snowflake target connection. You can either set up with Snowflake or you can um, set up a BigQuery connection. But for this demonstration, we will take Snowflake. So we go to Snowflake target. We've got to uh, assign a name to it, assign the account URL for our Snowflake target. Just keep in mind that you've got to assign the entire name. So it's the account number dot snowflake computing dot com. That's the, the entire account URL specify the port that you want to connect with Snowflake, usually it's 443, specify the database in Snowflake, specify the warehouse that will be used during the load by Data Lakehouse, specify the user that Data Lakehouse will log into Snowflake using the user DLH underscore test, and specify the role that you want the DLH underscore test to assume while load data from Data Lakehouse.io. And you can either choose username, password, or keep your authentication to connect with Snowflake. If you click on save and test, it will do a quick test with Snowflake to indicate if everything has gone right. 
if everything has connected right, you should see a green checkbox, something like this, indicating that everything has gone right. We have covered creating sources. We have create covered cover creating targets. Our next step is to create sync bridges. So once you go to sync bridges and you click on new sync bridge, you should see, you should see uh, sync bridges, which are similar to, yes. So we should go and see a new sync bridge. Once you go to new sync bridge, we can specify the name of the bridge. So I specify Postgres underscore bridge. I specify a source that we created, and then I specify the target that we've created, specify the time zone that you want to use for syncing. Uh, you can either choose GMT or UTC, or you can choose America or any of the local time zones in the US. So let's choose UTC. Uh, you can specify the sync frequency. You can, um, right now we've got sync frequency for these different time zones. So we've got one hour, two hour, three hour, up to 24 hours. But very soon we plan to launch less than one hour sync frequency at 30 minutes also. Once you save your sync bridge, you should see a sync bridge created very similar to what you see on this screen, where you can actually see the name of the bridge, you can see the state of the bridge, you can see when was the bridge last synced. And in case, in fact, you will uh, want to create the bridge, want to do a historical load. So you click on the actions button on the right and you should run sync bridge right now to complete an initial historical load after that you will have your Delta records being loaded on the sync frequency that you have assigned. So I hope this session um, was clear to kind of indicate how you would go about setting up your connection with Postgres. But if you have any questions, any queries, please reach out to us on terralekhouse.io website and we'll be happy to answer any questions and take it forward from there. Thank you for your time. Have a good day.